Welcome to episode three of the three-part Twinsip Kiteboard series aimed to drop some science and education on your ass. Wait, I can't say ass on YouTube? Are you sure? Son of a bitch. Well, anyway, after this episode, you should be able to walk into any shop or go to any online site and confidently know not only what kind of board you're looking for, but also why it is good for you. Episodes 1 and 2 exhaustively covered rockers and outlines, and in this episode, we'll be covering what I like to call the three C's of board design. Construction, cores, and contours. After receiving numerous requests that it looked like I was living underneath a bridge for the last two episodes, I now have a fresh new haircut and a nice clean shave. Thanks for the recommendation. Think of a kiteboard like an unprepared meal. You have a bunch of ingredients sitting around that all need to be combined, but changing what ingredients go into your masterful creation will change the way it tastes. So things like triax glass and carbon strips and ABS, epoxy resins, all change the way a board performs based on how you combine the ingredients. This is why the construction of a board is equally as important as rocker and outline in defining its performance. Let's start with listing most of the major ingredients that make up an average twin tip kite board and describe briefly their functions. From the top down, we'll start with a top sheet. A top sheet is usually made from PVT, which is really just a thin piece of plastic and has two specific functions. The first being that it provides a place to print, sublimate, or screen graphics on your board. And two, it provides a protective layer from the laminates and inner core. The inner laminates are usually some sort of combination of fiberglass and or carbon. There are other laminates that are used, such as Kevlar, but for the most part, fiberglass and carbon cover what is used. Fiberglass is measured both in the direction of the weave of the fabric and in the weight of the fabric. The most common weaves in kiteboards are triaxial glass, biaxial glass, and unidirectional glass. Up close, triaxial glass looks like this and will provide a stiffer flex. Biaxial glass looks a bit like this up close and will be more flexible. Unidirectional glass looks a bit like this and is usually used in combination with either a triaxial or a biaxial glass to get specific flex patterns. Carbon, which looks like this, provides the stiffness at a much lighter weight ratio than fiberglass. Carbon also has properties that allow it to snap back into shape a little faster than fiberglass. Now on to cores. Modern kite boards usually have wood cores, but some are made with a very dense closed cell foam. Wood cores can be several types of wood, but most commonly are paulonia, birch, or poplar due to their longevity, weight, price, and speed of regeneration. If you're not as familiar with growing wood as I am, wait. A polonia tree can grow up to 20 feet per year and regenerates from its original root system. What that means is many of the woods that are used for modern kiteboard cores are actually some of the fastest regenerating plants on the planet. Kiteboard bases can either be another PBT top sheet, a top sheet with a treatment to make it more scratch resistant, or a base that more closely resembles that of a snowboard. The rails of a kiteboard are typically ABS or a urethane, which are both used for their good flexibility, shaping, and strength characteristics. ABS offers not only a great surface for edging on the water, but also a protective layer for your kiteboard. This leads us to a discussion about flex, which is just another way of saying bend. The combinations of all of these ingredients will affect flex more than anything. The two kinds of flex that are the most important to a twin tip kiteboard are longitudinal flex and torsional flex. Longitudinal flex is the flex from tip to tail or across its length and the one flex that most people test for when they pick up a board. To give a more accurate flex measurement, you have to mimic the flex as if you had both feet over the inserts. For the most part, this flex pattern will determine how stable your board is for landings and how it reacts to chop. Torsional flex is the flex across its width or from rail to rail. This flex is difficult to measure as in order to do so, you need to support the tail with your feet and twist the nose from side to side. Most people can't test the torsional flex just by doing this, but you'll get a good idea of how flexible the board is. For the most part, this flex pattern will determine how much pop you have out of the water and how easy it is to track upwind. Reflex refers to the quickness that a board snaps back to its original shape after popping out of the water. The contour of the inner core will also change flex patterns. You've probably heard the term 3D wood core using a lot of brand terminology regarding the shaping of the inner core. A 3D shaped core is more difficult and usually more expensive to make, but allows a designer to specifically change weight and flex patterns at exact locations on the board. Two examples of this would be, number one, making a step on the rail of the board in the center to allow you to keep the center of the core thick and stiff, but keep the rail nice and thin to reduce drag and weight. 
Or number two, making a step in the tip and the tail to reduce thickness in the core to keep the tips more flexible to handle chop better. We have talked about the first two C's in construction and core and how it relates to on water application. Now let's move on to contour. This section refers to the base or bottom of boards and though there are still some boards that use a flat bottom, I'm going to spend most of my time talking about concaves and channels. Concave, which just means curving inwards, is used on beginner, intermediate, and advanced boards. Usually the single concave is pretty subtle and does not start directly at the rails, but is a gradual change starting from a flat part of the base. A typical single concave goes from flat to an apex of about 3 to 4 millimeters in the center and is noticeable when you look close, but in order to really see it you need to put a flat object across the bottom. Concave will speed up the board and make it ride higher in the water as it channels the water more directly down the center of the concave and out towards the fins. Boards with concave typically turn tighter as well. Channels act like long fins and will create more grip on the water as well as breaking the surface tension of the water to create softer landings. There are about 33 bajillion different channel designs out there and each shaper will have their own reasons for the pattern. Channels will allow riders to go without fins and still have grip on the water. But some boards with really big channels on the bottom will create a lot of drag and slow the board speed making light wind riding more difficult. So there you have it. Everything you ever wanted to know about constructions, cores, and contours. My three C's of kiteboarding design. Not to be confused with high C, emergency, or hepatitis C. By now you should be able to confidently walk down to your local spot or into your local shop and break down not only the terminology that goes into board shape and design, but also have a pretty good idea of what kind of board you are looking for based on your skill and riding style. But before we go, we want to leave you with one of our favorite Facebook posts of the month. It's from an unknown source and is a photo taken at the recent North American Racing Championships in San Francisco, California, with a caption that says, are we 100% sure that this isn't John McEnroe posing as Sky Solbach? I mean, the resemblance is uncanny. As always, if you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to use any of these social media outlets or just send us an email. And get creative this time. Please check out axonkiteboarding.com for news and updates, and we are currently taking suggestions on topics to cover in new episodes. Please let us know what you'd like to get schooled on next. Until then, have fun in the water and kick some I still can't say